guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna learn how to make a cloth pad for those heavy, heavy days. Supplies you're gonna need today are soft shell fleece. This is what we're gonna be using for our backer or our waterproof layer. You can use pole. I will link pole and the soft shell fleece down in the comments below. And then for the core, I'm gonna be using heavy organic bamboo fleece. I really like organic bamboo fleece because it doesn't cause any kind of allergic reaction. Um, it's thin, but it, it absorbs so much uh, fluid, so much liquid um, for being so thin, so you don't get that really thick bulk. You're also gonna need some cotton. Today I'm just using this really pretty yard of cotton that I got from spoonflower.com. It's a website where you can de design your own fabric or pick out your own fabric and have it made. I will link that below for you guys. You might need a disposable pad. I'm gonna show you a few patterns um, for pads that you can get online, but um, if you don't have access to online, well, I guess if you're watching this video, you do have access to online, <laughs> but if you don't have the capability of getting um, a, a pattern online and being able to print it out from your home, then you might be able to use a disposable uh, pad that you already have at home. And then you'll need some pins, some scissors, and a marker. You're also gonna want a snap plier set. I will link one of these from Amazon, but I would suggest if you don't already have a snap plier, there is no way to put these on without the snap plier. So make sure you get a snap plier. And then you're also gonna need an awl, which will come with it. And this is so you can poke a hole for your snaps. I highly suggest that you get snaps that are good quality. Um, I'll make sure I link one below so you guys don't get junk, but if the deal seems too good to be true on your snaps, it's probably too good to be true. And I've ordered, you know, the one that has like 20 different colors and it's really pretty, but um, the snaps are junk. And they, when as soon as you use your pliers on them, they just go and they crumble. So I will link you guys some good ones. So before we jump straight into the project, let's talk about what you can use for a pattern. I have a disposable pad here. Um, I have kind of a stash from, like five years ago before I started using cloth pads. And so I'm just gonna open this up. So if you did not have access to a printer or something that you could, um, you know, a way that you could print out an online pattern that you got like on Etsy or even Pinterest, sometimes you can find some, some free pad patterns, um, then you could use a disposable. So if I just take this apart, you could come through here with a piece of paper and a pen. Um, and if this is kind of the size that you always use, then you could use this and you could trace it and create your own uh, pattern for your core. And that would be totally fine. If that's what you need to do, that will work. But for today, I'm gonna show you two patterns that you can get on Versadile, which is on Etsy. Um, it's Corky Lorenz, and she makes really, really easy to use, um, easy to understand patterns, and they're not expensive. This one was a dollar, and this one, I believe, for sizes seven inch to 15 inch was like five bucks. So it's really, um, inexpensive. You can't share the PDF with anybody. It's just, you know, once you buy it, it's it should be just for you. Um, that's kind of her little clause that she puts in there, which is totally appropriate. And, but you can, you know, use these over and over. You can make yourself um, an outline and be able to trace it over and over and make many pads with it. So I'm gonna show you this one first. This is called the Share or her beginner pad. And this one is pretty easy to understand. So you can see here, seven inch, nine inch, 11, 13, 15. So you can get a pretty big pad out of this. And basically what this is, is this is half the pad. So this is the top half or the bottom half. So you'd wanna print out two of these, which I have. And so you'd basically, let's say we want to pick seven inch. We would cut here along these lines and she gives you the option to do two snaps, um, or excuse me, she gives you the option to do a width of 2.5. So, you know, you could measure your underwear or whatever you like. Like on heavy days, I think three inches better, but on regular to light days, a, a two and a half inches better. It's just less bulk down there. And then, um, and then she also gives you um, the three inch uh, width snapped, which is really nice. So basically you would print two of these out, decide what, what pattern you want, and then you would cut along it and you just tape them together and then you have your pad pattern. So this is for the beginner. And then the other one is her round shape. She's got many different shapes and she'll tell you on there whether it's like beginner, um, intermediate, or maybe a little harder depending on what the shape is. Her favorite is, or excuse me, my favorite is um, her round shape. And this is what I use mostly in my shop when I was selling cloth pads. So it's just this basic round shape. And what I like about this style is that you can come through here and kind of get really creative and customize 
your pad. So first of all, these are, this is the middle of the pad, okay? So this is where the snap happens. So you can either choose to have one snap, like it shows here, or you can do a wider snap base and you can put two snaps in here. So if you're someone that's moving around a lot or you just find that your snaps seem to come undone with just one, you can put two in, which is really nice for like those bigger pads. And so that's the middle piece. And then what's really cool is that you can decide um, what size you want your flares to be. And what I mean is like the top of your pad. So let's look here um, at this disposable one. Okay, so let's look here at this disposable one. So what I mean is, is like, this is a flare, right? So this is the middle piece, so, and then this is a flare, and this is a flare. So this could, could be the back or the front, and you can decide which way when you're looking at a pad. So what's nice with this is that you can decide whether you want um, a 12 inch on one end, and maybe like an 11 inch on the other end, or you can do both of your flares the same. You could do both of your flares 11 inch. The reason she has this measurement up here is if you put two of these 11 inch rounded flares with your center core piece here then you're going to come out with an 11 inch pad so if you decide to mix and match and maybe put a 12 and an 11 together you do need to measure it because that's probably you know it's going to make it the size maybe a little bit different but it's just really fun because you can mix and match so like for example today i'm going to be using this 10 inch for one side of my flare and then I'm gonna be using the 12 inch for the other side because I want them to be different shapes because I'm more of a center to the front bleeder and so I don't necessarily need as much coverage. So this will be my back because it's only 10 inches and this will be my front because it's 12 inches. To be falling back to the stuff we know will fail Stop my thoughts for no given reason None at all No, it's not the way I plan not the way I want it. No, it's not the things I meant. Know that I'm not being honest. Not the way I want it. I still miss it. I, I just want to be the one who loves you. I just want to be the one. Face the heat. And then what we want to do is just make another one of these patterns and we're going to be using this line that she's provided on the inside for the core piece. All right, so now we have both our pad pattern and we have the core, so now we can go ahead and get started cutting our patterns out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cotton and I wanna flip it over. And I'm gonna put it up here in the corner just because I like to try to save as much of the fabric as I can. And I'm gonna grab my pad pattern. And I should note too that we're making what's called a hidden core. So we're not making exposed, which I have a video on that that I will link below. So you can see what that is, but our core is going to be two things. One, it's gonna be hidden, which means it's gonna be inside the pad, so you won't be able to see it. You'll be able to see the stitch line um, around the pad of where it, has, where it is, but it'll also be um, stepped, which means we're gonna have this core layer, and then we're also gonna have another core layer, which is gonna provide us um, extra, extra absorbency for heavy days. And then I'm just going around my pad here with my marker. You guys can decide um, what kind of pen you wanna use. This is just like a regular pen, but you guys can use a fabric marker too if you'd like. This will be your sew line. So this is the line that you're gonna be following when you sew. So you wanna make sure that you don't get your marker on the inside, um, the inside line at all, like, you know, like a little mark or something. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and set that aside and we're going to grab our core fabric. Again, today I'm using heavy organic bamboo fleece. This is just my favorite to use. It's really absorbent, it's soft, which doesn't really matter if it's inside your pad, which, you know, it's always gonna be kind of covered by a cotton layer, but it's soft, it's really absorbent, it's easy to work with. Um, when you get it, be sure and pre-wash it, and by pre-washing, 
I don't mean you have to put any kind of detergent with it, but when it comes, you want to get it wet and then you want to throw it in the dryer because it's going to shrink a little bit because you don't want any shrinking to happen um, before or I mean after you make your pad. And so that's really important when you're using your cotton and your, your core fabric that you pre-wash them. The pole obviously doesn't need to be pre-washed and then the, the soft shell fleece that I'm going to be using today, that also does not need to be pre-washed because it doesn't shrink. some of this um, in fast motion but I want to show you you guys these are my sewing scissors but since I've been making miniatures on my channel you can see how awful they are and seriously tonight I'm going to Walmart and getting myself like some new fabric scissors because look at that these are cutting atrocious okay I'm gonna keep going in fast motion so you guys aren't bored to death Okay, so now we've got the first piece of our core. And now we're gonna do what's called a stepped core. So we're actually gonna make um, another piece that's gonna fit here. And we're gonna sew all of our core pieces together. So there'll be three, there'll be three layers. There'll be these two. And then the, I'm also gonna make one, I'm just gonna eye it. You know, I don't have a pattern for it, but I'm just gonna eye and cut out a piece that's gonna go right here on our center. And what that's gonna do is like it's gonna draw all the fluid right away into the center of your pad. Um, so this is gonna be really nice for those heavy days. I'm an old school man. I only wanna fall in love once with an old school girl. When I know, I'll know. Hand in hand like left, right, left, right, oh. Bonnie and Clyde You can have whatever you like When it's you and I We can have the world So I'm going to take this over to the machine And I'm only using one of these little tiny layers I'll use that for another project And then I'm going to, of course, take my pins out here Holding this together Actually, we can just do that right now and then I'm going to lay this, I'm going to actually flip that and just get it to where I like it. I think that's pretty good. Um, I will mention too, you guys don't have to do this long of a layer. If you wanted to just do a little bit more absorbency right here in the front or just on one side of the flare, that's totally cool too. Okay, so just take this to your machine and we're just going to sew 3.0 stitch length all the way around. Okay, so I've sewed all the way around that stepped core right there in the center. I'm gonna cut the threads off. And remember, this isn't gonna be seen, so the, the, the stitches here don't need to be really pretty. Um, we're not winning any awards with the middle of this core. And then I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the excess off, just because I don't want anything getting bunched up after being washed a few times, and I don't think that would be very comfortable. Now we're gonna grab our pad topper Make sure that the pretty side is down and the, the non-pretty side is, you know, the side that has our line on it, our sew line. And then we're just going to line this up wherever it looks good to us. Scooch this up just a little bit. And then we're just going to start pinning. Are you the same? Are you the same? All right, and then you're just gonna take this to your machine. And same thing, you're gonna just sew with a 3.0 stitch length and do some back stitching when you start and stop. Pick any spot on this where you wanna start. So I'll probably just start like up here. And you're just gonna go sew as close to the edge as you can, maybe one fourth of an inch. And the reason you're doing that is you don't want there to be a lot of overhang between like your stitching and the end here or this, the, the edge of your core because if there's too much of that, you probably will wanna cut it away just because you don't want it to kind of become wadded up and you don't want it to tuck under after being washed and dried and then it will kind of create like this bump in your pad and then won't be comfy. So just do your best and go slow. Make sure to lift your presser foot 
when you um, leave your needle down and lift your presser foot when you go along these these uh, these uh, edges here, you know, where it curves. And um, yeah, just take your time and have fun with it. Okay, so let's talk about the backer real quick because that's our next step. So you can get this at a couple different places. The place I really like is either Amazon. Sometimes you can find it on there and they have different colors. It's just kind of whatever's out there. Or you can go to fashionfabricsclub.com and I'll link that below. But that's where I have found um, the soft shell fleece. You can order it from overseas, but right now ain't nobody got time for that because it's going to be like two, three months probably. <laughs> so. Um, Soft shell fleece has like the water resistant, waterproofy side, and it, you can hear it, like it's really smooth. And then there's the side that's intended to be on the outside. It's usually really soft. And so we wanna make sure that this is like our good side and um, our, or like our pretty side and our non-pretty side. So with the pretty side facing up, or with the layer, the side that's gonna go against your panties, you're gonna lay this on here. And same thing, I try to make this stretch as far as I can. You know, because from one yard of this, that's how you have to order it, is by one yard. You could probably make, like a pad this size, you could probably make like maybe 25 to 30 pads. Um, so that's pretty good. You know, you can get a lot of pads out of one yard. Um, if you're making them even smaller, the pads even smaller, like for um, a young lady, then you could get even more than that. So I'm just gonna lay this out and make sure it's straight. And then I'm just gonna come through here and put a couple of pins in. Cut out. You don't need to uh, cut any of this excess off. Um, you're going to be doing it on your sew line. So if you want to cut it off because it makes you feel better, that's that's cool. But you don't have to. And then we're going to take our pen and we're going to decide where our turn hole is. And I think I'm going to do it. I always try to do it like on a straight edge. So I'm just going to do this turn up here. And because this is a little bit thicker, right? We've got three layers of the heavy organic bamboo fleece. That will decide kind of how big you you want your hole. So I think that will probably be plenty. That's probably like an inch and a half. So I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna start uh, on either one of these points. Make sure you backstitch, go all the way around your pad, lifting your presser foot on the curves um, so you don't get any bunching. Just take your time. And then when you get back around to this line, backstitch again and then uh, we'll cut it out and uh, flip it inside out. And then just come along here. All this extra right here, leave this, okay? Between these two lines, our turn hole, leave this extra fabric because you're gonna want that to turn the fabric inside out. And I'm just going about one fourth of an inch away. And then when I get to these corners, I'm just cutting into the corner before I hit the stitching. Don't hit your stitching, you'll be super sad. Um, but I'm just cutting before that just so that when I turn it inside out, everything kind of lays nicely and, and uh, it's not tugging right there in the corner. I just come through here with my orange peeler. I like the orange peeler because it's not too sharp. Okay, and then right here where our turn hole is, you can see that the fabric, since we left some bulk there, it's naturally wanting to go in on its own, which is really nice. So I just line that up, make sure it looks good. And then you guessed it, I'm gonna give this a press real quick. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this again to the machine. 
We're gonna start right here where our, our turning hole was and we're gonna back stitch when we start and stop. And we're just gonna do like a 3.0 stitch length and we're gonna go all the way around our pad at about a 1 4 inch. When you get to these corners here, like on your wings and then right here in these corners, leave your needle down when you pivot and that'll make it a lot easier. So just leave your needle down, lift your presser foot and then you can turn your pad and put your presser foot back down and keep going. Grab your pliers and your snaps and the pad that you just sewed around and let's cut these strings off. I gotta get new scissors, you guys. I'm doing it tonight. Okay. So if you've never done this, don't be intimidated by it. It's very easy. So just lay your pad out, flip it over so that the part that's gonna go into your underwear is facing you and just Kind of put these wings together, line it up and decide where you want it to go. So I'm just going to say about there. And then I just kind of pick this up so I don't go through everything. And I'm just going through the wings and I'm just kind of making a mark. So now I have a mark here. So I'm going to put a hole there. Nice and through. Don't get that into your finger. I've done that before. It really, really hurts. Okay. And then I see the other hole here. So I'm just going to make sure I get a nice driven hole through that one. Okay, and then just take your cap. So the way, if you've never seen these snaps, the way these work is um, this is like the, the cap to your snap. And then there's a male end and a female end. So take the cap, poke it through the hole, and now you can see the little prong coming out on the other side. And let's just start with the male end, it doesn't matter. And then get your pliers. Give it some firm pressure, but don't kill it. And so now you can see that the prong from this cap is flat. It's pushed it flat and that will keep the male end on there. So then all you do is you're just gonna flip it and you're gonna do the exact same thing again, making sure that um, you should see a male end or a female end and the top of a cap on one side. That's how, you, that's how you know you've done it right. There we go, you guys, it's all done. So let's check our snap. Looks great. So now you have a heavy um, cloth pad for your heavy days. You know how to make it. So now you guys can just have fun and go crazy and <laughs> get fabric and make as many as you want. Um, what's really cool is like that pattern from Versadile, the round shape is that there's, it goes seven inches to 15 inches. So you can mix and match like I did. Like my flare here is a 10 inch flare and then this one was a 12 inch flare. And I just put them together and made what I wanted so it can go according to your bleeding pattern. Um, and then as far as like making the heavy, now you guys know how to do that. So I'm so excited for you guys and I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, send me a picture on Instagram of your pad that you made. Um, or if you guys have any questions, just leave a comment here. And I'd love it if you give me a like and subscribe and share the channel. Invite um, other, other people that would like to make cloth pads to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye! Please.